now our task is to see if we can understand the solutions to the L equals zero version of the radial uh, portion of the hydrogen atom Schrodinger equation. So remember, we've broken down the Schrodinger equation into a radial piece and an angular piece. The radial version of the Schrodinger equation in the specific case where L equals zero is this equation right here. Uh, so it's possible to uh, treat this formally and solve it as a formal differential equation, but we're going to take a somewhat simpler approach uh, right now, and we're going to simply demonstrate that a function of this form, an exponentially decaying function, so my radial function is an exponentially decaying function of r, we can just demonstrate that this function solves the radial version of the Schrodinger equation when l equals zero. So that's what we'll do now. Uh, let's start by uh, taking these terms one at a time. So remember what this means is take the r derivative of the function, then multiply by r squared, then take another derivative, then divide by r squared, and multiply these by these constants. So we'll do that first step by step. So here's our function r. The r derivative of that function, derivative of an exponential just pulls down the exponent. So that looks like minus c e to the minus c r. If I, multi if I then bring in the r squared, so r squared times that result I've just gotten is minus c r squared e to the minus c r. I now have another r derivative to take. So now I have two r, so I need to use the product rule. r derivative of this, derivative of r squared is, is two r. So the first piece looks like minus two c r, leaving the exponential alone. And then product rule says that leave the minus c r squared alone and pull down another minus c when I take the derivative of the exponential. So that negative c times this negative c gives me positive c squared. And then I still have an r squared and then the exponential. So that's what I get after taking the r derivative of this piece. So that's taking the r derivative of that. Now what I have left to do is divide by r squared and multiply by these constants. So I'll say uh, let me go ahead and rewrite this all now in orange since I've done my intermediate work. I've got minus these constants times these constants, which also have a negative sign. So I'll write h squared over 8 pi squared m. I've got a 1 over r squared multiplying by this r, so that's a 1 over r. And I've got a 2 and a c. I'll write that here, 2 times c times h squared. Uh, and I have an exponential. Uh, this e to the minus cr, I'll go ahead and rewrite that now since I'm done taking derivatives. Every time I see e to the minus cr, I'll just rewrite that as capital R. So I've taken these constants, multiplied by the first term. Now I need to take these constants and multiply by the second term. So now I've got a minus h squared over 8 pi squared mass. 1 over r squared now exactly cancels this r squared, and I still have a c squared in this term, and then e to the minus cr, which I'll write as capital R. So that's the full result of taking uh, these constants times the derivative of r squared times the derivative of my radial function. I can then go ahead and write down my Coulomb term, so that looks like minus z e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught 1 over r times big R, and my energy term minus er, that should equal zero. If indeed this is a solution to the Schrodinger equation, to the radial portion of the Schrodinger equation, that's zero. I'll write a question mark because we're still just double checking whether that's true or not. So we can ask ourselves now, is this true or is it possible that this is true? Uh, in order for this, is, this to be true, everything on the left-hand side of the equation has to completely cancel. So I have uh, two terms that look like 1 over r times big R, 1 over r times big R. So those two terms need to completely cancel each other. I also have two terms that just look like my function of r multiplied by constants. So those terms also have to cancel each other. So if I take the first and the third terms uh, first, this 1 over r term needs to cancel this 1 over r term in order for my function to be a solution to the Schrodinger equation. Uh, so we need two things to be true. We need the first and the third terms to cancel. So I need the constants 2cH squared 
over 8 pi squared mass minus ZE squared over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, to be 0. So that's the condition I need in order for the first and third terms to cancel. Those certainly don't look the same as each other. And I don't have the flexibility to choose very many of these variables except for C. So H and pi and mass of an electron and the charge of an electron and the permittivity of vacuum, those I don't have any control over. However, C is just a constant. I, I've said, let's see if this exponential solves the Schrodinger equation. It certainly wouldn't solve the Schrodinger equation for an arbitrary value of C. But I can solve for the particular value of C that does make this a solution to Schrodinger's equation. So if I rearrange this equation to solve for C, if I take the second term, the ZE squared over 4 pi epsilon naught term, and put it on the right side, so 4, uh, that's not correct, ZE squared over 4 pi epsilon naught. And then I take everything that's not a C in this term, the 2H squared over 8 pi squared mass, and I flip them upside down. So 8 pi squared mass over 2H squared. So that means the value of C after some cancellation. Uh, this 4 will turn uh, that 8 into 2, which will also cancel that 2. The this pi will cancel one of these pi's, and what I'm left with is uh, z e squared times pi times mass over epsilon naught h squared uh, is the value of my constant c. So let's pause and talk about that for a minute. That is the particular value of C that makes this a solution to Schrodinger's equation, uh, to the radial portion of Schrodinger's equation. If you notice, the, this value C multiplies R by in, in an exponential, so the units of C must be 1 over length. 1 over length times length makes this unitless like the exponent of an exponential must be. So we know that this collection of constants must be a unitless uh, I'm sorry, mu must have units of 1 over length. So let's define something that has units of length. If I take uh, all these constants and turn them upside down, so I'll, I'll say epsilon naught times h squared over, uh, let's rearrange these a little, pi mass times e squared. And I'm leaving out the z intentionally. So that collection of constants, since z is unitless, this collection of constants must have units of uh, length, since I've turned it upside down. And that is a thing that we're going to call the Bohr radius. So that turns out to be a pretty important quantity in understanding the size of an electron in a hydrogen atom or in hydrogen-like ions. Uh, as we'll see more in the future. But this particular collection of fundamental constants defines this thing called the Bohr radius, which has a value of, as we can determine by plugging in these fundamental constants, if we calculated the value of the Bohr radius, that would be about half of an angstrom. So what that means is this constant C that we're talking about I haven't included the value of z in the Bohr radius, so all these other constants are 1 over the Bohr radius. And so the constant c is the atomic number of the, of the atom we're talking about divided by the Bohr radius. So we've succeeded in uh, doing two things. Number one, we've determined that this exponential does, in fact, solve the radial portion of the Schrodinger equation if uh, the c has a particular value. And we've solved for that particular value of the, the constant c. We have one more thing left to do, which is to guarantee that this second term also cancels the fourth term in order to solve the Schrodinger equation. So uh, the second term, which is constants multiplying by r, needs to cancel the fourth term, which is this constant that we call the energy multiplying uh, r. So in order for that to be true, the other requirement that we have is that uh, minus c squared h squared over 4 pi epsilon naught. Nope, that's the wrong collection of constants. 
c squared h squared over 8 pi squared mass. If I add that to negative e, I have to get 0. So we've determined what the value of c needs to be. What's left here is the energy. If, if this function solves the radial Schrodinger equation, the energy will have a particular value. That value of the energy will be minus c squared h squared over 8 pi squared mass. But since we now know what, z is, uh, what c is, c is atomic number divided by Bohr radius, we can rewrite this as minus h squared over 8 pi squared mass. And then c squared will be z squared over a naught squared. So that is the energy of uh, the value of this value e, the energy when this exponential function is inserted and, and solves the Schrodinger equation.